On July 17, 2025, Kuwait formally inducted the Bayraktar TB-2 unmanned combat aerial vehicle into its air force during a structured ceremony held at Salem al Saba Air Base. This decision marks a substantial step in Kuwait's ongoing defense modernization efforts, representing not only a hardware acquisition but also a broader shift in how the country approaches aerial surveillance, reconnaissance, and precision targeting. The induction ceremony included a live demonstration of the aircraft's operational capabilities, allowing defense officials to observe its functions in real time, and was accompanied by detailed briefings explaining the platform's technical systems and intended roles within the Air Force. The Bayraktar TB-2 is designed to conduct intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance missions as well as execute precision strike operations without a pilot on board. It is classified as a medium-altitude, long-endurance unmanned combat aerial vehicle, capable of sustained flight for over 27 hours. Its service ceiling reaches up to 27,000 feet, allowing it to operate beyond the reach of most short-range threats while maintaining visual and electronic observation over wide areas. The system is remotely piloted from ground control stations and includes autonomous features for waypoint navigation, automated takeoff and landing, and mission continuity in the event of communication loss. Its sensor suite includes high-resolution electro-optical and infrared cameras, enabling the aircraft to capture and transmit imagery and video in both day and night conditions. Laser range finding and target designation functions are also built into the system, allowing for accurate detection and location of objects of interest. This capability supports real-time decision-making, as data collected by the drone can be used to inform command centers, guide manned platforms, or direct ground units with updated battlefield awareness. Kuwait's decision to adopt this particular platform follows a thorough evaluation of available unmanned systems, with attention paid to factors such as reliability, mission endurance, operational costs, and adaptability to the country's environmental and strategic context. In 2023, Kuwait signed a procurement agreement that included not just the aircraft themselves, but also the supporting logistics, technical documentation, training programs, and ground systems needed to maintain and operate the drones domestically. The agreement facilitated training programs for Kuwaiti personnel, many of whom spent time abroad to gain direct operational experience with the systems. This training is expected to support sustained use of the platform without constant reliance on outside expertise, signaling a longer-term goal of achieving technical independence in unmanned aerial operations. The integration of the Bayraktar TB-2 into Kuwait's Air Force reflects a wider global trend of adopting unmanned systems in conventional military structures. These platforms offer clear operational advantages. They reduce risk to personnel by removing the need for pilots to operate in contested areas, they extend the reach of surveillance and targeting beyond the line of sight, and they operate at a fraction of the cost of traditional manned aircraft. Moreover, the ability to deploy and maintain these systems from small or forward air bases gives them strategic flexibility in both peacetime and conflict conditions. Kuwait's military leadership views this platform as a tool for both deterrence and proactive defense. By equipping its forces with long-endurance surveillance assets that can remain airborne for over a day at a time, the country improves its situational awareness over key areas of interest, whether they be borders, infrastructure, or maritime zones. This persistent presence supports early warning capabilities, reduces blind spots in monitoring, and allows for coordinated responses to developing situations before they escalate. In this way, the drone system acts not only as a reactive tool but also as a core component of the national security architecture. The induction also represents a shift in how national air forces are structured. Whereas past systems relied heavily on centralized command structures and traditional airframes, Unmanned systems like the TB-2 introduce distributed intelligence and autonomous operation into the equation. They are increasingly used not just for single missions, but as part of networked operations where multiple systems share data and coordinate their roles in real time. This approach increases both efficiency and speed of response, qualities that are becoming essential in modern conflict and security scenarios. Additionally, the acquisition of such systems requires the creation of new infrastructure and protocols. Ground stations must be established, secure communication lines must be maintained, and airspace deconfliction must be coordinated with civil aviation and other military platforms. These changes represent a logistical transformation that affects not just the Air Force, but also interagency coordination, defense planning, and national technology policies. Kuwait's investment in these areas suggests that the drone acquisition is only one part of a broader transformation in its defense sector. By bringing the TB-2 into service, 
Kuwait not only enhances its own defense capabilities but also demonstrates its readiness to adopt advanced, data-driven technologies in national security. The aircraft's presence within its military is expected to serve both as a deterrent to potential threats and as a platform for developing operational experience with unmanned systems. This dual role positions the platform as both a strategic asset and a stepping stone toward broader technological modernization within the armed forces. The induction of the Bayraktar TB2 is a significant development in Kuwait's defense evolution. It reflects a careful alignment of operational needs with technology acquisition, a structured approach to training and logistics, and a forward-looking strategy aimed at enhancing national security through precision, endurance, and situational awareness. The system's arrival is not just the deployment of a new aircraft, it is a sign of organizational change and a growing emphasis on autonomous defense technologies in the region.